everybody in the media started writing about humble the chukesan and i told my sir nita lola your career ends here because there's too much expectations now what is going to happen beyond this hi this is nita lola and you can catch me on midday.com stay tuned hi and joining us on bts stars we have a celebrated designer whose costumes have adorned leading ladies across generations Please welcome Neeta Dulla ma'am. Thank you. And uh, ma'am from what we know the plan wasn't to get into designing but today with all the awards do you feel that was meant to be? I definitely think it was meant to be because uh, as a, a youngster I never fathomed that I would do a course in fashion design and I would teach fashion design and I would get into um bridal wear and then films and you know it was uh, amazing and unreal the whole experience has been surreal and uh, i think uh, yeah sure it was meant to be and uh, you started out with icons like shri devi juhi chavla and all the other uh, popular leading ladies of the 90s so how did you uh, settle in and understand their style when you were a newcomer uh i think my background of fashion is what helped me uh, kind of understanding the entire process of figure types of understanding color combinations and somewhere i feel um, shri devi had a great part to play in my understanding of colors because uh, um, in those days you never had a pantone shade card you never had uh, pinterest or any digital medium to kind of uh, understand colors but uh, um, the way she would uh, explain colors to me sometimes out of a fresh green leaf which uh, which was either lying uh, somewhere or uh, a fruit uh, which was uh, lying next to her you know and it was a very specific thing like if it was a peach the the uh, top portion of a peach the color that is the color um it was it was an amazing way that she explained colors to me there is a funny anecdote that i must mention on this note uh, which has kind of uh, resonated with me my entire life and that is about uh, the fact that no two two white colors are the same you know and uh, uh, there was an outfit in which i was supposed to make it an entire white post chandni there was a show that she was doing and we wanted to recreate the white tandav outfit i used uh, uh, a white synthetic lycra and i used pure white fabric and i used white sequins and all the three white colors were different and i didn't even think about it until later that she explained to me that you know the whites have to be the same otherwise they create a completely different format of color that you see visually on on uh, camera and that has kind of resonated with me my entire life where um whites and blacks is something that i'm very careful when making and uh, yeah uh, apart from the background of fashion and my foray into fashion choreography actually i wanted to always become a fashion choreographer is also another thing that helped me uh, to where i am today in understanding figures and understanding visually what an outfit will look like because um there i used to kind of style things put things together see it on stage understand what it looked like a lot of photo shoots for various magazines i think everything that i've done um, from the time i've been a student has been a learning experience and especially during the 90s like you said there were no references no instagram and you know you really had to go on field and find uh, yes. your stuff so any memories of that like where you had to go out of your way and actually create something i think back in the 80s 90s we had to do this on a regular basis so um a lot of your uh, uh, inspirations came from libraries and uh, books in the library um going back into the history of costuming finding uh, new ways of uh, translating that into your own language of fashion being able to create uh, uh, styles out of what you kind of heard about international designers uh, bringing to the foray 
um, it was only until uh, in the early 80s that we 90s I think that we started getting magazines. Prior to that, it was only two magazines a year, you know, two editions of a magazine. Uh, unlike today, where everything is uh, you get to know in a matter of like five seconds. Yeah. Um, when the show is going on, you're seeing it live. So that's, I think, uh, where uh, it kind of, um, you know, uh, titillated your senses of creativity. It kind of uh, um, brought you to think and wonder and bring to the forefront your imagination about uh, an outfit or creative garment. And uh, another actress you've had a long association with is Aishwarya Rai. And I think Hamdil Rechuke Sanam is unforgettable, of course, the costumes and it had become a style trend and people still follow that during Navratri. So if you could share some memories of that. So I think that is the first time uh, media started taking note of costumes in the industry. And uh, it was such a such an amazing experience and such an amazing awareness of costumes that you know when everybody in the media started writing about Hamdul De Chukesanam, I told myself Nita Lola your career ends here because there's too much expectations now what is going to happen beyond yeah. this but uh, for me life has uh, transcended into every film being uh, one better than the other a platform where uh, I've had to kind of bring my best foot forward every time and uh, having said so I feel that uh, Hamdil was an experience that was absolutely wonderful creating those costumes uh, was just a process it was not something that we had decided ki yeah we'll go through this journey and uh, uh, you know this is going to be recognized it was never that um, going to Bhuj understanding how the ladies wore their outfits, um, understanding what the urban Gujarati lady thought about, you know, the kind of costumes that they wore. We actually went and we spoke to the ladies there. We stayed there. Um, the entire team of uh, technicians with Sanjay Bansari stayed there for about a week and uh, sourced our fabrics and uh, whatever we needed to at that point in time. And that's how I think Hamdil came about. And that was a journey that uh, started this entire process of uh, awareness. That was also a time where, you know, the designers were, of course, very involved. So were you on set as well and you know, any of those memories, if possible? So I'm always on set and even at that point in time, I was definitely on set. When a new outfit is being, uh, uh, a new look is being done or a song is being done and, uh, you know, have seeing that everything is perfectly in place. And that was a time that, um, in Hamdul actually, I, I did the scope for all the women in, in, the, in the film. And uh, seeing that each and every one had a color coordinated sensibility that was not overlapping onto the other person's colors. So there was a lot of detailing that goes into film uh, uh, costuming. Thus, uh, as a designer, as a technician, one needs to be part of uh, the process of a song, a new look, and one needs to be there for sure. And that was a time uh, when we, for the first time, had like two assistants on set. Okay. You know, vis-a-vis. -vis. Today, it's a norm. And that was uh, the first time we had like an two assistants who were there. And then of course we have to mention Devdas, another iconic film, the costumes are still remembered. So anything from there that you remember really, that stands out for you? Uh, Devdas I could write a book on. I think each and every aspect of the journey was iconic. Each and every um, thought process from the ideating process with Sanjay uh, and the team to actually sourcing of fabrics, um, I was given a, a go ahead on uh, with something that I liked in terms of the kind of creative aspect that I wanted to bring into it and that is, um, you know, we saw the previous Devdas films in Pune. We went to the, the Pune Institute and we watched the films. All, the, all of us technicians were taken to Pune. Once we saw the films, uh, I remember Sanjay saying, 
um, you saw the style statement in the films, right? I said, yeah, so we need to recreate this. He said, no, we need to recreate larger than life. And that was it. It was like giving you the reins to just shoot forward. Knowing that, you know, um, Bengali saris are like sari panch var. I wanted to bring about a magnanimity and that was the one word that was in my mind because that is what Sanjay wanted as a vision, which was in my mind. And I said, uh, why can't Bengali saris be 10 yards and 12 yards? And um, the process was cumbersome. So uh, how is it that one would um, kind of have this made easy to wear? So. I pre-stitched all the saris and uh, the saris are like 12 meters and more in yeah. the film. Um, in fact, uh, uh, the Dolare song has about 18 meters of fabric. You can't see it, you know, you, you can't gauge that. I think that was a journey which uh, was absolutely... It was like finding your creative self, finding your uh, talent in draping, I would say, because all the 21 saris were pre stitched and pre-draped uh, today's so-called concept sarees. Mm. So yeah, that is uh, what it is. And back then, of course, you know, film got a lot of international recognition as well. And today you have a lot of Indians at Khan especially, but that time, back then it was a special thing, you know, seeing an Indian on an international platform. So any memories there? For Aishwarya and Shah Rukh to go to uh, premiere the film at Khan's, was like, okay, this is another film festival they are going for, so we need to get the clothes ready, that's about it. Mm. When they went there, the kind of response that they got was absolutely unreal. And I guess that that put the step forward for a lot of celebs today going to Cannes. True, that's true. And uh, among the newer generation, you have recently worked with Kangna, and then of course there's Samantha as well. So if you'd like to tell us about uh, working with them as well and the costumes. I absolutely love and enjoy working with Kangana because uh, she, is, she is a technician's muse. Someone who will translate your look very aptly, very hardworking actor, very trusting of your sensibilities and that actually as a technician makes you um, kind of uh, uh, want to not only put your best foot forward but uh, work on the garments like an exam because uh, here's an actor who will not say anything to you just wear the clothes in all honesty and all integrity uh, respecting the fact that you've made and designed something and even accept and appreciate it on set and personally so it's an absolute delight working with her and uh, I have yet to come across an actor who trusts you so much. Um, Samantha also uh, I worked with on uh, Shakuntalam and uh, she as well had this entire thing where she just put herself uh, into your hands and said, okay, I'm here, do what you need to do and uh, just make me look the best. And that's, that's how I think your best work comes up when you have actors who trust your vision, who trust your expertise and uh, will just go with the flow of your vision. And Samantha had spoken about that was a tough film for her as well. Uh, so did you all kind of discuss that? The, like, you know, how, like if she had any additions as well, any inputs? It was more so uh, the looks were discussed and pre-decided with uh, Aguna Shekhar Garu, uh, the director. And uh, I was again given a very great platform of creative freedom because I've run the entire film. With Samantha as well, she, it was a new genre for her. Yeah. So she was like, Nita ma'am, just do your thing and I'll just wear it. But yes, of course, when it came to the heavy outfit that she had to wear in, this, yeah. in, the, in the bridal sequence, she would just give me a look like this and you know, like this is what you put me through. And uh, it was something that she would like, yeah, I know I'm looking beautiful, but you know how much weight there is of jewelry and clothes on me. I was like, vanity needs this, sorry, can't, can't just do anything about it. But yeah, she, she also um, just carried it off with a great deal of style and brilliance. There was another sequence in the song which 
you know, they were shooting a song and she was uh, uh, to wear this costume, which the director decided that, no, we'll shoot the song in the, in the costume she already is in. And that was a heavy costume. When she started to dance, I had my nails in my mouth. I said, this costume she cannot dance with. So, uh, Gunashekhar Garu said, you, you do what you need to do, but uh, we'll make it lightweight. So, on set, we kind of cut, cut out the entire inner structuring of Can Can, which was to make it look a little more uh, voluminous. And uh, then she was able to dance because the first portion of it, she just couldn't handle it. And, and, this, and the outfit was not for the song, it was for the scene. Yeah. So, whatever changes needed to be done on that, on set we did and then she could dance beautifully. And with Kangna as well, she has this image of a no-nonsense person, outspoken, but like you said, she's one of the most trusting and cooperative actors. So I think that's quite a revelation also. So if you'd like to add something about her as well. for If uh, uh, she sees that, you know, you, are, you know your job and you know your techniques and um, it relates to her sensibilities, then she is absolutely very trusting. I mean, I have yet to come across her having asked me during the making of Mani Karnika, Nita ma'am, what am I wearing for my next scene? That never came from her. In fact, I asked her also. I said, don't you want to know what you're wearing for the next scene? And she was like, why should I want to know? You are doing it. You're making me look good, so it's okay. That's amazing, yeah. And another actor who you've really seen evolved is Priyanka Chopra as well. You know, you've known her from her starting out days and today, of course, she's this international icon. So, how would you see her journey from someone who knows her from before? Um, I think Priyanka's journey has been absolutely exceptional. I think uh, from the time that I know her is when her foray into Miss World happened. Ever since that uh, to today, I mean, she's been a woman who holds her strength, you know, and she speaks volumes about that strength. In fact, I am so amazed at, uh, uh, you know, that phrase that she mentioned on one of her shows about haters gonna hate, potatoes gonna potato, roti's gonna rotate. I, I think it resonates with a lot of people in a lot of profiles of jobs. And um, she has uh, come up the hard way. She has worked hard for whatever she does. And I see that effort transcending even today, if you see, uh, her uh, new series uh, as well. She is uh, the same kind of effort from the beginning that I worked with her in films to today. I see the same transcend into her work. So there is a consistency of uh, uh, the magnitude of effort that goes into playing whatever uh, she is doing and uh, that brings about exceptionality. Yeah, and we are nearing the bridal season, so of course you are known for your Indian wear, so we have to ask you what to expect this season. I think a multitude of things, you know, because the bride is no longer looking for that basic red lehenga. Mm. The bride is looking for something different. And when I say different, there's a whole plethora of difference that comes out. Um, there is Indo-Western fusion, there's Western, there's classic, there's reds, there's hot pinks, there's larger than life magnitude of bridal wear. Um, there are various functions in the bridal season that uh, brides are looking for clothes for. But the one thing that remains constant, I feel, you know, whether fashions change and fashions are uh, constant on a certain platform, is the fact that the bride wants something different, something that she can resonate with through life, something that she can keep for posterity and even wear it. And that's what here, what we do is, we work absolutely on a bespoke manner, whereby we have a very intense consultation with the bride and depending on her structure, her carriage, her requirement, her job profile, her um, socio-economic background, uh, we kind of design a kutya garment that she can wear, she can cherish and she can pass it down to, you know, generations to come. So I guess that's, uh, that has remained constant. And as a designer for me, I think the biggest blessing and the biggest accolade is the fact that, you know, I might meet a bride who I've dressed 20 years back, I might not even remember the face, 
but they come and say neetha ma'am you remember you made my outfit and i still wear it and it still looks good and it still shines as new and that's something that you i think is a blessing when you know you get these kind of uh, compliments and that's an accolade in itself true but post the pandemic have you seen any changes in what the brides expect post the pandemic i think uh, what's really happened is that because of the awareness on digital medium there has been a lot of awareness for brides their families and everybody so the uh, the concept of looking at a wider range of designers looking at a wider range of clothes has become very prominent of course the disparity of uh, uh, you know a high street lehenga to a designer lehenga where the price points uh, are not taken into consideration have happened but i guess this is the pros and cons of uh, uh, you know understanding that there is so much availability but i've i've realized that those who uh, are looking for that finish and that comfort and something that's unique will definitely um, come and ask for it so you are in a in a in a race that you need to understand and you need to uh, go with the flow of it and that's what has happened pro post uh, covid pandemic yeah and especially with stylists coming in so do you feel that you know has kind of changed because they are now the medium between the actors and the designers unlike before films i don't think that is the case but yes red carpet dressing definitely it is and uh, before the designer was the stylist and uh, you know the yeah. the designer the costumer as well so uh, in a holistic way today there is a stylist um, but i don't think that much uh, um of a change in terms of uh, there is a profile that has come and transcendent in between uh, you as a designer and and the actor Yeah there are different profiles that are coming up and one needs to be happy that there is more specialization coming up and especially since you are known for your work for women but not many people know that you style men as well you design for men as well so uh, if you'd like to tell us about that as well so again uh, i do a lot of bespoke and uh, uh couture garments for men which is uh, more on to uh, dressing them for their reception for the wedding is what we kind of specialize in so tuxedos or uh, different kind of larger than life sherwanis and yes i must mention here that uh, i have a lot of grooms who come in wanting to dress like uh, uh, akbar from jodha akbar you know they they come with a photograph and they're like can can we have this kind of a look and it's it's absolutely amazing to see them want to translate their final day look into something that they've seen on screen and you are nearing 400 films so if you'd like to ask, i know it's difficult to choose but if you could just the most memorable ones that are on the top of your mind no don't put me <laughs> through this because i have no answer to this ever uh, ever like i said to you initially it has been an ever evolving process and every time i thought that you know this was the best film and that's it i can't do anything better than the, the, this there is another one that comes up which is absolutely brilliant and let's just say that it's a blessing that i could finish 400 films and uh, i i'm just moving on and just enjoying this process and i wouldn't have it any other way yeah but any challenging moments that you really that people don't really know on because we see it on screen but behind the scenes we don't really know the kind of effort so uh, there is an effort that goes into every film yeah. because the the kind of films that i do today i have got a lot of magnitude of costuming research um styling so like i said for devdas i would say that all my films i can write a book on correct so um i wouldn't be able to give you a pinpoint one challenge mm-hmm. you know and uh, let's just say that these now have not they have not challenges anymore they are beautiful journeys because uh, i've understood that this ha- is a part of the process this is a process that i need to well decipher before i get into it it is a um, decipherance of sorts of getting things organized and then going ahead with it 
and that journey is not challenging it's absolutely beautiful and it was lovely having you thank you so much for doing this subscribe to midday india get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon